friends! Story time again. Who is this? You know when. Scoffmoss, you keep saying it. It's always the same thing. Yes, Scoffmoss, no. But this one going to be good. Why is that? Well, because the poppy little puppy. That is why. Oh, and, um, we have another guest too. Stay tuned. So let's get on with the, uh, the pokey little puppy. Some friends may remember from probably earlier this year on Facebook Live, we already read the pokey little puppy, but we wanted it to be good. So let us be here. The pokey little puppy by Jeanette Sebring Lowry, illustrated by Gustav Tengri. Five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass and up the hill, one after another. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. They were missing one. Now where in the world is that pokey little puppy? They wondered, for he certainly was not on top of the hill. Here are the puppies. There is no pokey puppy to be found. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing that they could see going down was a fuzzy caterpillar. He wasn't coming up the other side. The only thing they could see coming up was a quick green lizard. Here is Fuzzy and Green Lizard. But when they looked down the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was running around, his nose to the ground. There he is, probably smelling place where Dogbot had been. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked. And down they went to see roly poly pell mell tumbly bubbly till they came to the green grass and there they stopped short what in the world are you doing they asked i smell something said the pokey little puppy then the four little puppies began to sniff and they snorted too rice pudding they said and home they went as fast as they could Go over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them, with rice pudding as dessert. Dogs do not normally eat rice pudding. But their mother was greatly displeased, so you're the little puppies who dig holes under the fence, she said. No rice pudding for you. And she made them go straight to sleep. But the pokey little puppy came home after everyone was sound asleep. And he ate up the rice pudding and crawled into bed as happy as a lark. Opportunist. The next morning someone had filled the hole and put a sign. The sign said, don't ever dig holes underneath this fence. But the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence anyway, just the same, and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Here is that little ragamuffin. That is what we will call him. To be nice. He ate the rice pudding. Dogs do not eat rice pudding. Once again. Through the meadow, they went down the road, under the bridge, across the green grass, up the hill. Oh, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. Oh, one, two, three, four. One little puppy was not there. Now where in the world is that little puppy? They wondered. For he certainly was not on the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. 
the only thing they could see going down was a big black spider. Oh! Uh, he wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a brown pop toad. But they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill. Here is Toad. There was the pokey little puppy, still sitting, still as a stone, with his head on one side, ears cocked up. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another, and down they went, asked to see roly poly, pell mell, tumble bumble, until they came to green grass, and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? They asked. I hear something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies listened. They could hear it too. Chocolate custard! They cried. Someone is spooning it into our bowls! Scuffle must have issue. Yes! You can hear the spoon tapping the bowl. But how would you know it is chocolate cotton? Dogs should not eat chocolate. And home they went as fast as they could. Go over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, under the fence. And there sure enough was dinner waiting for them. With chocolate custard for dessert that was not meant for the dogs because dogs will not eat chocolate. But their mother was greatly displeased. So, you're the little puppies who will dig holes. Under fences, she said. No chocolate cutter for you tonight. Here are the puppies going to bed. Because they were bad. And she made them go straight to bed. But, the pokey little puppy, he came home after everyone was sound asleep. And he ate up all the chocolate custard and crawled into bed happy as a lark. And he got sick in the middle of the night because he ate chocolate and dogs should not eat chocolate. The next morning someone filled the hole and put another sign. The sign said, Don't ever dig holes under this fence. But in spite of that, the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide wide world. Through the meadow, they went down the road, under the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two by two. And they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves one, two, three, four. <laughs> Nowhere in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered, for he certainly was not on top of the hill, blah blah blah. Here is the puppy eating up the chocolate custard because he is fat. And the sign. It looked the same as before. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see was going down was a little green snake. <laughs> he wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a big grasshopper. So apparently the snake is smaller than the grasshopper. But, you know, we are not going to compare things. But when they looked on the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, looking hard at something that was on the ground in front of him. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked. And down they went, roly poly, tumbly bumbly, hell well, to see. They came to the grass. And there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? They asked. I see something, said the puppy little puppy. The four little puppies looked, and they could see it too. It was a ripe red strawberry growing right there in the grass. Strawberry shortcake, they cried. There is the fat dog. He eat everything. And home they went as fast as they could, go over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there sure enough was dinner waiting for them with strawberry shortcake for dessert. 
Butter Mother said, You're the puppies who dig under the fence. Okay. No strawberry shortcake for you. She's the strawberry shortcake Nazi. You know, the cousin of the soup Nazi. Which they went straight to bed. But the four little puppies waited till they thought she was asleep. Which they slipped out. It filled up the hole. When they turned around, <laughs> there was their mothers waiting for them. What good little puppies, she said. Come, have some strawberry shortcake. And this time, when the puppy, pokey little puppy came home, he had to squeeze in through a wide place in the fence. And there were his brothers and sisters licking the rest of the crumbs from their saucer. Dear me, his mother, what a pity, you're so pokey, more like you're so fat. Now the strawberry shortcake is all gone. So, pokey little puppy had to go to bed without a single bite of the shortcake. And he felt very sorry for himself. Well, he shouldn't. He broke the rules. So he got to bed. Look, if you stay out of the dark, would you eat the chocolate custard? Would you eat the rice pudding? You're going to get punished. That, that is just how it goes. And next morning someone had put up a sign. No desserts ever unless puppies never dig holes under the fence. And that was the pokey little puppy. Oh! It's always good to have a meal with then dessert. Yes! Well, today we have a very nice dessert. I want to work in a, a friend. His name is Rick Pot... 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 Why did Scoff Moss not get that? <laughs> so friends! Scoff Moss going to step to the side because he's... Stepping all over his lines. Rick Pottori! Still mispronounce it! <laughs> well, that was perfect! Hello, hello friends! <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I want to sit on Danklin. So to meet him too. Uh, I play music in a band called uh, The Woolly Mamas with my two best friends, uh, Zach Bossert and Kenny Thomas. And uh, we've been together for about 16 years in one form or another. Uh, we all went to high school together. Um, don't do the math on that, that's scary. Um, uh, we've been working on a bunch of uh, music since we got here. We did an EP right when we got here called uh, Parlor Deluxe uh, that, was, uh, that we really had fun doing at our house. And then uh, since then, basically, we've been working on another one called Epic Drag. And uh, it's hopefully going to be kind of a, um, an indie rock record, you know, like we normally do, but hopefully we'll reflect some of the older stuff that we used to uh, play and listen to, like Ray Orbison and things like that. And hopefully, um, uh, be a bunch of textures in our uh, record. <laughs> but uh, I'd be delighted to play a song uh, from that. If, uh, if, oh, thank you, sir. Wow, my guitar tech's a, a forest troll. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good night there. Um, this song is called Go to a Party. Um, and it's about, uh, it's about a person who's so nervous about doing things sometimes that it's easier to get frustrated and, and blow it all up and not go to anywhere uh, uh, than it is to um, confront why uh, they were afraid to go to it in the first place. And I don't know anybody about it like that, but anyway, I'll play it for you now.
Keep on scuffling.